Hello and thank you for joining this edition of Entrepreneurship Through Acquisition podcast. My name is Brian O'Connor. I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Uh, We are proud to be joined today by Steve Groya, uh, Managing Director of Aldean Capital. Steve, thank you for joining us. We'll ask that you give a little bit of background and and let's get started. Great, thanks. Good to be here, appreciate it. Like you mentioned, I'm a Managing Director at Aldean Capital. We're a junior junior capital middle market uh, private equity firm, and we do both mezzanine and equity co-invest in lower middle market companies, typically in the two to eight million dollar range. So it should fit really well with what a lot of the search fund guys are looking at yeah. uh, relative to their investment profile. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, so I started doing it in uh, in 1996 with uh, William Blair Capital Partners. Uh, from there, was with Prairie Capital, um, a lower middle market buyout shop here in uh, in Chicago. Uh, I left there. Bought a company with a couple of uh, other individuals uh, that we own down in Atlanta, and then from there joined Aldean Capital in uh, 2015. Excellent. And, and can you tell us a little bit about the team at Aldean and, sure. and where you guys are all located? Yeah, we're, we're here in Chicago. There's five of us. Um, we have uh, uh, our founder, Mike Revord, and Burt Brown. Uh, they founded the firm in 2007. Uh, I joined a couple years ago. And then we've got uh, a vice president, uh, uh, Chris Schmaltz, and Brian Lamp is uh, an associate with us. So there's about five of us. Uh, we're going to add another guy or two here in the next couple of years. Uh, we're in our second fund, which is $160 million. Uh, we're a member of the SBIC program. Uh, and we should probably be in the market for a new fund end of this year, sometime early next year. Great. So it's been great. We've, we've uh, invested in 35 companies over the 10-year period of the firm. Uh, our average investment size is anywhere between 5 and $12 million. Uh, and like I said, we do a little bit of a combination of mezzanine and equity co-invest. Exciting. Great. Yeah, no, thank, it's great. Thank you. Thank you for that background. So um, many of our viewers and listeners today are, are interested in pursuing a path in entrepreneurship through acquisition. Many of them are uh, following the path. Um, what can you tell them about the relationships that Aldean Capital builds with uh, their, their clients and the folks that you work with? when you might think about getting that relationship started, sure. how that's sort of evolved over time and the many investments that Aldean Capital has, has made. My answer to that is always earlier the better because uh, the quicker we get to know you, the more we get comfortable with your philosophy. We can understand what types of deals you're looking for and we can be helpful in that type of uh, uh, sourcing capabilities. Um, but most importantly, once a search fund finds the deal and gets it signed up, there are about 7,000 moving parts at that point in the process. <laughs> Uh, so anything you can do to eliminate or reduce those moving parts on the onset is so much um, is so valuable in terms of getting the process because certainty it closes such a big deal uh, and I think the quicker we can get involved we can give you our thoughts on capital structure we can give you our thoughts on on, on timing and financing um, and love to get involved in the process as soon as, as possible sure so even even as an ETA entrepreneur or a search funder is putting together uh, initial information package maybe yep. to bring their investors up to speed their equity investors that is up to yep. speed that might be something that you would have an interest in taking a yep. look at seeing if there might be a fit with all the capital and uh, and and exploring the relationship further even in advance of maybe executing on an, uh, an LOI absolutely because there I think we can give them some guidance in terms of, all right, this is what we think a capital structure could look like. And we know full well that the, the full investment thesis is not fully baked. Um, quality of earnings still need to be done. So there's still a lot of questions. But based on the information they provide, we can give a very high level outline and say, if all of this checks out, here's what we think we can do. Um, and then maybe even offer some opinions or some ideas that they hadn't thought about sure. relative to structure. Sure, that, <clears throat> that's, that's helpful. So now, um, I'm a, I'm a search funder. I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, someone that's pursuing this path, and I've got a, a company that's in my sights. Um, I'm building the model. I'm sort of kicking the tires. Yeah. I'm, I'm vetting the assumptions. How should I think about your involvement in the capital structure, whether it be uh, the amount of leverage that's appropriate for a business of this size? Sure. We're sort of talking about this lower micro middle market. Um, how do you guys think about the debt and equity balance in the company and what are some of the influencing factors that might uh, change your answer based on situation, industry, company attributes? Sure, no, it's a great question and, and, and one that I th- I'm not sure people give enough thought to because a lot of times when folks look at that type of thing, it's like how much debt can I put on the business? Sure. Well, there's one way to look at it, but the other way is how much debt can the business um, you know, how much debt can the business handle in terms of paying down principal, covering its interest payments, but more importantly then, 
creating enough capital and cash flow to grow the business, right? Yes. It's one thing to pay down the debt, it's another thing to grow the business. So what we really focus on is we don't focus necessarily just on pure EBITDA. Sure. We focus on capital, or we're, we're focusing on operating cash flow. Sure. Um, you could have a company that generates $4 million of EBITDA, but to generate that EBITDA, it has to invest $2 million of capex every year. Yes. That really reduces the amount of capital available for the business. So all in capital sort of says, what, what, are the cap, what are the all in capital requirements of the business? Yep. What is maintenance capex versus growth capex? Yep. How should we think about this engine generating cash over time? Exactly, and then what we do is we throw that into the model and we kind of develop what we call it's a fixed charge. And so we want to make sure that the company has enough availability to kind of cover all of its fixed costs. Sure. And then that also includes taxes, interest, and principal payments. My, my guess is that working capital plays into this equation as well as Absolutely. you think about free cash flow. Absolutely, and that's uh, one of those kind of things that kind of sneak up on you. And if you don't think <laughs> about it, it can, it can get you. Yes, it, it, it sure does. So, um, uh, again, the, the search fund entrepreneur has now uh, moved a deal toward the closing table. Yep. Um, you're putting together your sort of package. Yep. Um, how might a searcher think about the covenants associated with that package and some of the um, interactions and interplay between sure. Aldean Capital and maybe potentially another debt provider within the capital? Yeah, so, so, so once you get down to the covenant level, typically the senior lender um, drives the covenants. Um, and they're, they're primarily four or five different covenants that are, that are used. You can have a fixed charge, uh, a minimum EBITDA, uh, total debt to EBITDA, and then uh, CapEx. Those are kind of the four main ones. The senior tends to dictate what levels those come in at, and then the mezzanine capital tends to take a 10 to 15% haircut to those numbers when it sets their covenant levels. So that is more of a relationship with the bank or with the senior lender, and then we kind of chime in with what we think makes sense as well. Great. So, that, so that's an interesting segue into the next question yep. here then. You, you now have a capital structure that has obviously its equity component. It has multiple debt components. Yep. How should a ETA entrepreneur think about the interplay between those institutions and any agreements, any implications for their business going forward and the relationship with Aldine vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the other debt providers that sure. might be in the capital? It's a great question. So the primary relationship between the, 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 the senior debt and the mezzanine lenders through an intercreditor agreement. And then that kind of dictates how those two securities work together. Um, the mezzanine, the big difference between mezzanine and, and senior debt is um, the mezzanine debt is typically non-amortizing. So it is a little bit higher interest rate um, and it tends to have a five to six year um, um, term to it. But what that really does is that reduces the amount of principal payments throughout the life of the investment, which then frees up capital um, for the equity group to reinvest in the business to help generate growth. That's absolutely right. Great. Well, and, and, and now let's add one additional layer of complexity to the capital yeah. structure. Uh, oftentimes you see in these small businesses the use of seller paper. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe uh, our viewers and our listeners might benefit from just understanding a little bit about what seller paper is sure. and where that component of uh, a, a pretty regular uh, component of this capital structure in this space fits into the overall yep. broad scheme of things with the equity and the debt providers. It's interesting because seller paper actually we like that because it shows alignment for everybody, sure. right? Um, so if the, if, the seller, if the seller wants to kind of get the deal done, um, it's a good place for them to park some of their capital. Sure. It's a business they know, um, you know, given other, other investment vehicles, it should be a good spot for them. Where that sits on the capital structure, you have the senior debt, the mezzanine debt, seller debt, equity. Yep. So from a ranking strategy, um, first priority goes to the senior, second to the mez, third to the seller, forth to the equity holders. Yeah, and historically, have you seen that the pricing on that particular piece of the capital structure is in line with where it sits in the pecking order, or is it really all over the board? It's really kind of preferred stock yeah. is how it really is. Um, sometimes it has a current pay, sometimes it doesn't have a current pay, but the interest rate on the seller note tends to be somewhere between the senior and the mez kind of in that six to 10% range sure. is what we've seen. And again, that can be a combination of current pay and pick. Sure, absolutely, great. Um, shifting gears just a little sure. bit, that's all extremely helpful as, um, as, as people think through the, the capital structure on these types of investments. How do uh, banks in general, and, and maybe more specifically Aldine Capital, think about um, the search funder or the ETA professional as a buyer vis-a-vis 
other groups, mm -hmm. um, potentially groups that are working out of a committed pool of capital, um, perhaps an independent sponsor. Uh, how do you think about working with that search funder as they're getting their deal across the finish line? Is it, is it sort of a different mindset and mentality? It is a little bit, right? Because if you've got um, a dedicated five-time private equity fund, they've done this a lot. You just have a different level of comfort. Um, if it's with a different type of independent sponsor who maybe um, has been doing this again for a little bit longer, um, knows how to kind of do the deal process, you might have a different, different type of, uh, of comfort level. But for us with the search fund, we view it as a really interesting opportunity. Um, the, the folks tend to be a little bit younger. Sure. They tend to be hungry. Um, they're very smart. And I think that's where we can be more than just money um, relative to the investment structure. Because a lot of times you get in there and again, there's a lot of capital out there and it's a competitive marketplace, there's no question. But um, if they can generate interesting deal opportunities, bring to the table um, some interesting co-investors from the equity slug um, through some of their um, search fund committed investors, um, we think that it's a huge opportunity um, for an asset class that has a lot of opportunity in that two to five million dollar EBITDA range. Um, so we, we um, obviously do a lot of diligence. Um, we check out everybody we work with. Um, we watch how they handle the process and that gets us more comfortable as we continue along the process. And that, again, kind of reiterates something we talked about earlier. The sooner we can get to know you, the better. Because yep. then we just have a better feel for how you look at the business, how you kind of handle um, challenging situations, your views on capital structure, because some guys really want to really kind of push the, the, the envelope relative to total debt and stuff like that. We just have a much better feel for how those, those folks operate. And, sure. And so so getting, back, getting back to the uh, point that we, we started with earlier, which is it's never too soon to start that relationship. Definitely. You, you want to understand how this person works, how this person thinks about capital structure, and how they think about the company and the industry that they're buying into. The easiest time to raise money is when you don't need it. Because <laughs> again, the earlier we can get involved and other smart people are involved, the, the higher likelihood we have to put together a structure that really works for everybody. The searcher, the equity investors, the debt investors, the company, the management team, and, and getting that kind of combined thought there, um, we found to be beneficial in more times than not. Great, great. And I, I would imagine that, that you know, the, the way that the firm views uh, search funds and ETA-related investment vehicles is a great beginning of yep. a new relationship. Oftentimes, you'll find a, a searcher that uh, has a success, and, and likely they'll go and do some more interesting things. It'll be an opportunity uh, for you to form a longer-term relationship. Well, not only that, the search community is tight. So I've invested in search funds, um, made investments in companies that were search fund-backed, and, and and all of those folks know everybody. Yeah. And so I think if you can do a good job for one and they pass your name on to somebody else, you get an opportunity. And, 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 and the Chicago program's been, been great. In fact, we've had a couple opportunities that have surfaced by us doing some round tables and getting to know some of the, the searchers. And so yeah. we're excited to be here. And again, yeah. thanks for having us yeah, on the no, podcast. That's, so. that's great. A, <laughs> a couple of uh, quick, sort of rapid fire questions sure. here for you. So. Um, I'm, I'm trying to understand, and I think our viewers and listeners would, would like to understand, um, from Aldine Capital standpoint, what are the really the big things that you're looking for in a couple different categories? So let's start with the company. I think cash flow generation is one. Um, because we take a little bit more of a debt orientation, we like to see a, a stable history of earnings. So if this is a 30% grower, we might not be your best source of capital. So we really like to see a long, stable, operating platform um, that is in a, an industry that, that is not going away, uh, and a company that puts together a capital structure that, again, can support the good and the bad uh, along the investment That's continuum. Right. And, and that might get into my next sort of topic here, the deal. Yep. What, what are you looking for in the, in the deal itself? Yep. So again, I think we're looking for a reasonable purchase price. So you know, listen, it's a competitive marketplace. No one is getting deals for below market anymore. Sure. Um, so we're just looking for a fair purchase price. And again, a capital structure that's designed for the business, not for the transaction. Yes. And for us, that's a huge distinction because so many times um, you look at a business and there's these rule of thumbs that can do, you know, two times senior, three and a half times total. And we put this, maybe it can, maybe it can't. Um, and you just don't know until you really put it in. So again, we really t try to take our time to make sure the capital structure fits the business, not just the, the there's no there's no one size fits all. No, and, and if you get caught, start thinking like that. That's when you get into trouble. Right, right. 
the entrepreneur or sponsor of yep. the deal. What are, you, what are you looking for there? Passion. Um, I think that is a huge part of the business because we look at it from an alignment standpoint. And for the search fund, um, this is probably the most important investment of their career. And so you know they're going to be dialed in. Um, then you just want to make sure that they are thinking about things in, 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 in the right way. So how does the management team respond to the searcher, right? Because it can be interesting when you get into a deal, you know, that search fund individual is going to be very involved in the business. <laughs> How's management feel about that? Sure. Um, how does the search fund um, individual know when to really kind of get inserted into the business, but then when to let the management team kind of do their thing? Sure. That just takes some feel and a little bit of time. Um, but we're looking for that passion, the alignment. Um, uh, it's great if they have a history or background in the industry that they're investing in. I was just going to ask um, about that. It's helpful. Doesn't always happen. Listen, we make investments in businesses that we haven't. Uh, we don't have a history in, but it tends to work out. So, you know, that kind of intellectual curiosity to figure out where the industry's going sure. um, and what the potential roadblocks are. Another thing we look for is transparency and honesty. Every deal has risks. Don't try and hide them. <laughs> let's just show what they are and let's figure out and try and cap the risk to, to, to what it is. Show us that you understand what those risks exactly. are and have, let's have a plan in place exactly. uh, for in the event that they should manifest. Yeah, when I get in kind of an investment memorandum or, or an opportunity that just only focuses on the good things but, and totally glosses over what we know are glaring risks, my radar kind of goes up a little bit. It's like, listen, it's not a big deal. Every company has risks. Let's just talk about it and we've got to figure out if we can, sure. and if we can, uh, if we can get comfortable with them. Yeah. Now let's talk about the, <clears throat> again, sort of a quick question here on the, um, the equity piece. Yep. What, are you, what are you looking for in that investor base? Yep. Uh, obviously, the searcher is not coming with, with the entirety of the equity uh, themselves. Yep. Um, how do you think about sort of who you're partnering with in the equity side of the, the capital structure? Well, it's interesting. In the search fund community, at least you see there's a handful of folks that are in almost every search fund I've ever looked at. Um, and so it's a little bit of a signal to us is, if their search fund investors are re-upping and investing with these guys, that means they like them and they like the business. Let's say they've got 20 um, investors and only four are participating. It just is gonna raise some questions. Doesn't mean we're not gonna participate, doesn't mean we wouldn't look at it, sure. but it kind of raises your radar screen. It's like, okay, why aren't other people interested in this? Is it the company? Is it the searcher? Is it, what am I missing? You know, yeah. kind of, you kind of, I don't like to always run with the herd, but at least yeah. you got to think about yeah. it. What, what am I, what am I missing here in this right. whole equation? Yeah, great. Um, let's shift gears just a, a little bit. And uh, I think everyone would enjoy hearing a little bit about um, a, sort of a behind the scenes look at what the underwriting process looks like, the vetting process, um, sort of, you know, that, that, the, the, the information goes into a little bit of a black box sure. as it relates to the searcher or the sponsor or the entrepreneur. Give us a little bit of insight. So I try and make it not a black box, candidly. Um, when we are going through our process, I keep our investment partners totally up to speed of what's going on. So like, here's what we're looking at and why. Um, so we tend to start with the model, um, just relative to say, all right, does this just make economic sense from what we understand of the business? But then we really, really drill down into the business and the people. Um, and we spend a lot of time with the people. So we want to know um, and get to know the searcher, um, what they're bringing to the table, what their thoughts are for the business. And then we really like to get in and understand the management team. Yep. How long have they been there? What are their thoughts of the business? Um, and while you're doing that, there's just a lot of moving parts along the way. Sure. And that's how the black box works is then you got to do a good job of, all right, I just did the model two weeks ago. How does that tie it into what I learned from the management team relative to what I learned from the industry information? And then you put it all together, and what we, we have, it's called an approval document. Sure. And that summarizes our entire diligence process. So we kind of take how we learned about the deal, how we structured the deal, why we structured the deal this way, what we like about the deal, and what we're concerned about the deal. Sure. Now, uh, I think there's a general concern around um, timing and some of the gating sure. items associated with getting a deal from LOI to the closing table to, to fund it, right? Yep. Um, what is that process, the, 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 the documentation and funding process look like from a timeline perspective, sure. involvement from the entrepreneur? Uh, can you help us better understand that? Yeah, and, and for us it depends on when we get involved. So if the company is already under LOI and a lot of the diligence has been done, we can piggyback off that and we can close in as quick as 30 days. 
Um, so, but again, let's say that uh, it's kind of pre-LOI or early LOI, quality er of earnings hasn't been done yet, some industry work hasn't been done yet, background checks haven't been done yet. That stuff all just takes time. And then if you have a senior debt, a mezzanine lender, an equity investor, a syndicate of equity investors, Good news, bad news is just a lot of documents that go into that. <laughs> right. and, and, and all Mainly those, bad news. Bad news, <laughs> a lot of bad news. Uh, and a lot of those documents interact with each other. And so that can just take a little bit of time. So I would say from LOI to close, it probably 60 to 90 days yeah. would be the, the thing. And then for us, it just depends on when you get us involved. If we're in early and we can piggyback off diligence, great. If we're in later and it's already been done, we can go really fast. Again, that, that much more reason to get the relationship and Absolutely. dialogue going sooner than even having yep. a deal in hand so that some of the relationship and vetting can, can start. To yeah, and we can also help um, with senior debt relationships. We have a lot of senior debt relationships. We can help on the diligence side of the world because we've got a lot of providers that we've used over the years. Sure. Um, and again, our goal is to be helpful and to bring more to the table than just economics. Well, I think that's particularly interesting and relevant for our audience here who maybe hasn't yeah. done a deal on their own or perhaps don't have a private equity background or, or uh, ETA background. Yeah. And so that, that certainly would be of interest and, and help to That'd the audience. Be, so um, fast forward, we've now uh, gotten through all the documentation, the funding, yep. and we have the business. And we're working with Aldean Capital. Yep. How does that relationship look over time? How, you know, right out of the gates, and what are some of the regular uh, interactions that an entrepreneur might expect with a group like yours? So every business is different. Some take a little bit more work than others. Um, the bare minimum stuff that we do is we tend to get monthly financials, so kind of a income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement with a uh, with a kind of an MD and A analysis to kind of go along with it. As the investment continues, those reports tend to get more refined, um, and, and we're not looking to create work. We're looking to hopefully leverage off of the business, off the information that you, the search fund guy, is, is using to, to help manage the business. Uh, we tend to take, depending on how much equity we have, uh, we tend to have a board seat or an observer right. Those meetings tend to be quarterly. Um, sometimes in the early stages they can be, they can be monthly if there's a lot going on, yep. um, but we tend to do quarterly, um, quarterly board meetings. And then we're there when you need us. Um, if things are going really well, um, my job is to let you do your thing. Um, but if you need help, you know I'm a phone call away. We're talking kind of on a monthly basis relative to the financial statement review. We're getting together on a quarterly basis. But our job is to kind of feel everything out in the beginning. Um, and again, be a resource for, for the entrepreneur. If things are going a little bit sideways, the, the thing we tell to, to, the, to our entrepreneurs, what we just said is listen, news is news, good news or bad. And I can't do anything if I don't have the information. Sure. So the quicker you can get me up to speed, even if things aren't what you want it to be, that's okay. It happens. We've seen it in a lot of our companies, unfortunately. But if we work together and get on it early, we can do it. The worst thing somebody can do is kind of surprise you. Yeah. So just keep it all above board and we're going to be good. <laughs> I think surprises are unanimously uh, rejected within the capital exactly structure, right. not specific to the debt or the equity. I think, I think that's uh, a great point. Um, and then as far as annual, uh, you know, an annual audit sure. or some more formal uh, processes yep. that you look for, help us understand sort of what that looks like. Yeah, good point. So because we're an SBIC, we're required to do audits in the businesses that we that we work with. So there'll be an annual um, accounting audit. Those typically are done in the first quarter. Um, so somewhere in that kind of January, February, March timeframe. Uh, and then what we also do either maybe a month prior to year end or a month after year end is the budgeting process. All right, what's next year look like? Um, and we really kind of focus on 12 month increments. I can't tell you what's gonna happen five years from now. I can't tell you what's gonna happen really five months from now. <laughs> so we kind of use the budgeting process to help us ask the right questions. So let's kind of see where we're at. Where have we been historically? How do we line that up? Where do we need to invest our capital? Um, where do we think uh, we need to add to the management team? Where do we need to add to the operating capabilities of the business? Uh, and we do that through the annual, um, annual budgeting process. And then what we like to do kind of two, three years into it is kind of sit back and say, all right, where did we think we were going to be in three years? Where are we? And now that we are at this stage of the investment process, what do we need to do to be there in the next two or three years? And I think that midpoint look um, doesn't happen enough, but it's really valuable. Yeah, absolutely. My, my guess is that that the level of involvement with the entrepreneurs and at the board uh, with those types of questions are uh, sort of 
is more or less um, depending on your role with the board. If it's an observer seat, if it's a, if it's a board seat, um, I, would, I would guess that your involvement is sort of fluctuates depending on. It that. does, and, it, and it, it's also dependent on how involved the, the search fund is. Sure. You know, yeah. it's not probably our job to put the budget together. It's my job to review the budget. Um, but to put that budget together, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So, you know, we don't tend to get involved at that level. If we have to, we will. Uh, but there we're really relying on the, on the search fund, and that's part of the whole economic structure that the search fund individual gets. That's why they're getting it, is because they're bringing the deal to the table. They're doing a lot of the kind of roll up your sleeves type work. They're really managing that investment for you. Yeah, right. Well, well Steve, this has been extremely helpful for everyone uh, listening and viewing, I'm sure. What, what did we maybe not touch on that you'd uh, like to finish um, as, we, as we sort of wrap up here? Is there anything that we didn't cover? I know we tried to pack a lot in uh, yep. to the 20 or so minutes that we were together. No, I think, I think you covered a lot of the key points. Um, you know, for the, the key takeaways is, is, again, whoever your capital provider is, just try and get them up to speed early. And then again, for me, the big thing is, let's just call things what they are. Um, every deal has its issues. Every investment, post-investment is gonna have its issues. It's okay. The more open and honest dialogue that you can have with your investment partners, the better off you're gonna be. And I think that really does put you in a position to, 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 to give the company its ability to succeed. Because again, at the end of the day, it's the business that's gonna be driving everybody's returns. Not necessarily just you, not necessarily just me, not necessarily the capital structure that we put together. It all comes around the business. So everything we're doing um, as a group and as partners should be focused on how do we enhance and help the business that we're all investing in. And if you don't lose sight of that, you know, you've got a good shot at making it work. Yeah. That's great, Steve. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really appreciate it. It's been absolutely. Fun. And, and, and thanks, everyone, for uh, listening and watching in. Um, we appreciate uh, your support. And again, thanks to Steve Groya of Aldine Capital.